The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Warm welcome to this service of daily prayer from St John's Princes Street, Edinburgh. My name is Alan Martin. I'm one of the congregation of St John's. Today we remember Edith Cavill. Edith Cavill was born the eldest of four children on December the 4th, 1865, in a small village near Norwich, England, where her father was vicar. Edith received a classical English boarding school education and spent a period after her schooling serving as a governess in Brussels. After caring for her father following a grave illness, Edith became a nurse at the London Hospital in 1896. In addition to working at hospitals and infirmaries throughout England, Edith served as a private travelling nurse, visiting and caring for patients in their own homes. In 1907, Edith assumed a position as matron at the newly founded L'Ecole Belge d'Infirmières Diplomé, known in English as the Berkendale Medical Institute in Brussels. While serving as matron at the Berkendale Institute, Edith launched a nursing journal, L'Infirmière, and taught nursing in many schools throughout Belgium. World War I broke out while Edith was in England visiting family, which precipitated an immediate return to Belgium where she began serving as a Red Cross nurse. Following the German occupation of Brussels in 1914, Cavill began collaborating with others to shelter and smuggle Allied soldiers out of Belgium and into the Netherlands. Motivated by deeply held Christian faith, Edith insisted on treating wounded soldiers on both sides, which, combined with her outspokenness against the war and the occupation, placed her in violation of German military law. Edith Cavill was arrested on August 3, 1915. During her depositions to the German police, Edith confessed to smuggling more than 60 British and 15 French soldiers, as well as a 100 French and British civilians of military age out of Belgium and into neutral countries. The evening before she was executed, Edith spoke to Father Sterling Gahn, the Anglican prison chaplain, these words, which are inscribed on her memorial near Trafalgar Square in London. Patriotism is not enough. I must have no hatred or bitterness towards anyone. On the morning of her execution, she asked Pastor Paul Le Sœur, the Lutheran prison chaplain, to ask Father Gahan to tell my loved ones later on that my soul, as I believe, is safe and that I am glad to die for my country. Edith Cavill was executed by the German government on October twelfth, 1915. Let us now worship God with words from Psalm 73. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me by your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And having you, I desire nothing upon earth. Though my flesh and my heart should waste away, God is the strength of my heart and my portion for ever. Truly those who forsake you will perish, you destroy all who are unfaithful. But it is good for me to be near God, I have made the Lord God my refuge. I will speak of all your works in the gates of the city of Zion. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Joshua. Joshua, son of Nun, sent two men secretly from Shittim as spies, saying, Go, view the land, especially Jericho. So they went and entered the house of a prostitute whose name was Rahab, and spent the night there. The king of Jericho was told some Israelites have come here tonight to search out the land. Then the king of Jericho sent orders to Rahab, Bring out the men who have come to you, who entered your house, for they have come only to search out the whole land. But the woman took the two men and hid them. 
Then she said, True, the men came to me, but I did not know where they came from. And when it was time to close the gate at dark, the men went out. Where the men went, I do not know. Pursue them quickly, for you can overtake them. She had, however, brought them up to the roof, and hidden them with the stalks of flax that she had laid out on the roof. So the men pursued them on the way to the Jordan as far as the fords. As soon as the pursuers had gone out, the gate was shut. Before they went to sleep, she came up to them on the roof, and said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land, and that dread of you has fallen on us, and that all the inhabitants of the land melt in fear before you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond the Jordan, to Sihon and Ok, whom you utterly destroyed. As soon as we heard it, our hearts melted, and there was no courage left in any of us because of you. The Lord your God is indeed God in heaven above and on earth below. Now then, since I have dealt kindly with you, swear to me by the Lord that you in turn will deal kindly with my family. Give me a sign of good faith that you will spare my father and mother, my brothers and sisters and all who belong to them, and deliver our lives from death. The men said to her, Our life for yours. If you do not tell this business of ours, then we will deal kindly and faithfully with you when the Lord gives us the land. Then she let them down by a rope through the window, for her house was on the outer side of the city wall, and she resided within the wall itself. She said to them, Go toward the hill country, so that the pursuers may not come upon you. Hide yourselves there three days, until the pursuers have returned. Then afterwards you may go your way. The men said to her, We will be released from this oath that you have made us swear to you, if we invade the land and you do not tie this crimson cord in the window through which you let us down and you do not gather into your house your father and mother, your brothers and all your family. If any of you go out of the doors of your house into the street, they shall be responsible for their own death, and we shall be innocent. But if a hand is laid upon any who are with you in the house, we shall bear the responsibility for their death. But if you tell this business of ours, then we shall be released from this oath that you made us swear to you. She said, According to your words, so be it. She sent them away, and they departed. Then she tied the crimson cord in the window. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The anthem today is based on words from Ezekiel. I will take you from among all nations, and gather you from all lands to bring you home. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and purify you from false gods and uncleanness. A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit put within you. I will take the stone heart from your chest, and give you a heart of flesh. I will help you walk in my laws, and cherish my commandments, and do them. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. A reading from John Jesus said, I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures, but will tell you plainly of the Father. On that day you will ask in my name. I do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world. Again I am leaving the world and am going to the Father. His disciples said, Yes, now you are speaking plainly not in any figure of speech. 
Now we know that you know all things, and do not need to have anyone question you. By this we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? The hour is coming, indeed it has come, when you will be scattered, each one to his home, and you will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I have said this to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you face persecution, but take courage. I have conquered the world. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, with God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Let us, in response to the word of God, ask our Creator to forgive us those times in our lives when we ignored or rejected the divine love and the divine law when we brought pain and injustice upon our neighbours and ourselves, and when we violated and abused life in its diversity and all of creation. It is written, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. May God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, forgive our sins, restore us to wholeness of life, and reveal God's abundant love for each and every one of us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy. Christe eleison, Christ, have mercy. Kyrie eleison, Lord, have mercy upon us. Living God, the source of all healing and wholeness, we bless you for the compassionate witness of your servant, Edith Cavill. Inspire us to be agents of peace and reconciliation in a world beset by injustice, poverty, and war. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, to the ages of ages. Amen. Two days ago, we celebrated harvest. We thank God for the gifts of this earth and for all those who labour to bring them to us. We ask that we may use and not abuse the earth and its products. We look forward to the gathering of world leaders at COP26 and ask that they may be inspired to agree ways of handling the climate emergency that are fair to all nations and peoples. We pray for all those suffering from hunger, poverty, or sickness of body or mind. And we pray for ourselves. 
I now invite you, in a moment of silence, to add your own prayers and intercessions. Uniting all our prayers into one, we pray as our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The twentieth century martyr Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote, I believe that God can and will generate good out of everything, even out of the worst evil. For that he needs people who allow that everything that happens fits into a pattern for good. I believe that God will give us, in each state of emergency, as much power of resistance as we need. But he will not give in advance, so that we do not rely on ourselves but on him alone. Through such faith, all anxiety concerning the future should be overcome. I believe that even our mistakes and failings are not in vain, and that it is not more difficult for God to cope with these as with our assumed good deeds. I believe that God is not a timeless fate, but that he waits for and responds to honest prayers and responsible action. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen.